So now for this video of my uh, learning electronics series, we're going to look at the NPN bipolar junction transistor wired as a switch. So of course you can turn uh, loads on and off with a mechanical switch, but uh, now we're going to look at how a uh, NPN bipolar junction transistor works as a switch. So to begin with, here is the schematic symbol for an NPN bipolar junction transistor. And, uh, pretty much everybody uses this. I don't think I have ever seen a different schematic symbol. But in any case, transistors have three terminals. The bipolar junction transistor terminals are called collector, base, and emitter. And normally they're not uh, labeled on the schematic, but uh, that's where they are. So the emitter, you can see we got the arrow there. The base, we have this bar here and a line coming out of it. And then the collector, we have a line coming usually across from the emitter and uh, going to the uh, bar right there where the emitter connects to the bar. The uh, arrow of the emitter is pointing out. So that's how you know it's an NPN. That's the semiconductor material that makes the uh, transistor. That's the direction that current flows when you go more positive to more negative. Same with uh, base to emitter right there. We'll talk about that a little bit uh, more coming up. So the physical component looks like this if it's in the TO92 package. We're going to be looking at the 2N3904. I think it's the most common NPN bipolar junction transistor these days. And somewhere I have a C945. I just included it here to show that uh, the pin layout is not always the same. So if it starts with 2N, there's no letters or anything else before it. But uh, 2N and it's a bipolar junction transistor. I find that we have the pin layout here looking at the flat side emitter base collector. Uh, whereas other ones, the emitter may be on the left, collector in the middle and base on the right, or there may be other pin layouts. I always check the data sheet to verify. So now the basic premise of a switch circuit, whether transistor, mechanical switch or whatnot, is either the load is uh, turned off, no current is flowing through it, or the load is turned on fully right there where our current is flowing through it as good as it can go we'll talk about that a little bit more coming up so in any case the NPN bipolar junction transistor we got the uh, part number right here when you're building circuits and uh, especially while you're learning electronics you will probably get a, a part number for a transistor that will work nicely in that circuit if the person designing it knew what they were doing and uh, so you can just uh, grab that Make sure you check out the pin layout and make the connections where they show it. But in any case, you need a little bit of a base to emitter current. So from the positive supply through the base and through the emitter to ground to let current go from collector to emitter. If there's no current going from base to emitter, then there will be no collector to emitter current. And anything in series with the collector right there will also be off there will be no current. So now we have this wired up if you close the switch. So I showed a finger pressing there. Now you can see we have a conduction path right there for current to go through base to emitter. Now we can use a small current. The bipolar junction transistor has what is called gain. Whatever current is going from base to emitter, it's going to let many multiples go through. Now it's not uh, exact the 2N3904 I think can be anywhere between 100 times 100 game to 300 times 300 game but in any case all we need is at least 20 milliamps or more that we let through collector to emitter and so a little less than half of a milliamp from base to emitter will definitely give more than that we'll do the math coming up but in any case that small amount of current lets many multiples in this case It'll let over 20 milliamps of current with a 150 ohm resistor protecting a red LED and 5 volts across it. We should get about uh, 20 milliamps right there. The maximum current you want to put through an LED. So now we're going to come to the math. The uh, current that we got there was the result of this calculation. So again, these are approximate. They don't have to be exact. Approximate is plenty fine. But in case, we have the 5 volt power supply and you can see the current path uh, right there for one of them. There's the other current path over there. But uh, for this current path, this was the one that uh, is set uh, electrically where uh, 
we just grab the value components we got in the voltage across there determines the current flow so uh, we got 5 volts there you can see we got 4.3 volts that's because the uh, base 2 emitter is a diode right there just like the LED it drops some voltage it's gonna drop about 0 0.6 0 0.7 volts from series components right there and uh, so out of 5 volts that's gonna leave us with 4.3 volts and then we have that voltage across the resistor which sets the current when the switch is closed and uh, we do the math there and that's what we get remember to do the math Ohm's law in uh, amps right there so 0 0.00043 amps gives us 0 0.43 uh, milliamps same thing right there and uh, so that's going from base to emitter now we got that uh, 0 0.43 milliamps again this is approximate and as I said before the transistor has what is called gain for every milliamp or fraction of a milliamp we got that uh, going through there we're gonna get maybe a hundred milliamps maybe up to 300 milliamps for every one milliamp going through and uh, so the uh, 2N3904 I think will have about a hundred gain under almost any circumstances maybe 300 gain the main thing is that we have a higher value than what the load needs so if it's a hundred gain which is low for a 2N3904 and uh, you multiply that by 0.43 milliamps that'll give you up to 43 milliamps which is uh, quite a bit more than 20 milliamps so that will make the transistor uh, conduct fully as far as this circuit is concerned you call that saturated and then when there's no base to emitter current then the transistor is not conducting you call that cut off and if the transistor is limiting current it's not conducting fully or it's not cut off it's uh, conducting but not fully then that's called the active region which we're not going to look at in this video so in any case we also have the current through the LED and the transistor from collector to emitter so 3 volts because again we have a diode here LEDs are a type of diode and when they're forward biased they drop some voltage as the base to emitter did the LED drops about 2 volts from the current setting resistor when the transistor is conducting fully and so you got uh, 3 volts divided by 150 ohms, about 20 milliamps right there. So now just really quickly, I wrote over here to make sure you always check the data sheet. Uh, one thing, if you look at a 2N3904, all the data sheets I looked at, they showed an absolute maximum collector current of 200 milliamps. And as you can see there, we got 20 milliamps going uh, through this one here, uh, maximum. And so we are plenty safe. So now we'll look at the circuit on the board. I don't know if you can read that, but it says 2N on top, 3904. And we got the emitter to the left, base in the middle, collector to the right. We're going to swivel it this way so that the collector goes to the cathode, the short lead of the LED, the base to the 10 kilo ohm resistor right there, and the emitter to ground down there. Instead of a push button switch, I'm going to use this jumper here. So there's a 10,000 ohm resistor to limit uh, base to emitter current. We got ground on both sides. There's no current going right now. That's actually holding the transistor off better than it would be without uh, the jumper connected to ground. We'll look at that. We got 150 ohms here. You don't have to worry, especially with 5 volts, of any current going from collector to ground right there. Just the way that the transistor is made. It's made to block a lot more than 5 volts in that direction. Now if we go to the positive supply, now you can see the LED is on fully. And one good reason to have your uh, switch or whatever go directly to ground is that uh, you avoid it floating. So as you can see here, my body can turn the LED on a little bit. So not a lot, but just a tiny bit of current from my body can go from base to emitter and get a small amount of uh, collector to emitter. And right there is the active region, not conducting fully, not fully off cut off right there so that's a good thing to demonstrate right there a lot of uh, learning sources for transistors don't even mention that so it makes it a little confusing when you see an LED kind of faintly glowing but in case this video is long enough hope you enjoyed oh also I got a little capacitor up here in case I bump the power supply sometimes it cuts current for a little bit you lose a lot of power and even a small value capacitor seems to pick up the slack uh, during that brief period of time so that's a smoothing capacitor. Helps hold the voltage across the uh, circuit if the uh, power supply voltage uh, changes briefly. So that's it. Thanks for watching.
check out one of the other videos I'm posting on the screen, and uh, check out the links down below. They all help a lot. I would appreciate it. I'll see you in the next video.